Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I want to look at yet another sound sheet today. This one, purely for the music's sake, really. I mean, well, no, because it's a cool record too. 1984, Chet Atkins, originally copyright 1923, Mills Music Group. It's another Evatone sound sheet from Clearwater, Florida. It's a one-sided record. It is somewhat translucent. You can see my fingers through there. It's sort of a brown, grayish color. And a Guitar Player Magazine insert from January 1985. And a wonderful song. And I don't think that this will hit a content ID match, I hope. If it does, then we'll have to cut little bits and pieces. But it's a great example of a sound sheet. Should sound page get bent, gently fold back and enjoy and play. For best results, play sound page on phonograph record. And if you need to stabilize it, you can put a coin right there as well. Because we're using the acrylic platter on the LP3, I don't need to worry about, um, I don't need to worry about um, putting a record underneath it. And I think we'll be okay in terms, well, maybe I should put something on there. I'll just put the record weight again, I guess. Where is the record weight? The record weight seems to make a good stabilizer in situations such as this but yet again i'm thinking to myself are we going to have an issue with this thing rejecting before the record plays hopefully not let's see here here it goes let's give it a listen Dizzy finger. <laughs> estimation Chet Atkins is is the goat the greatest of all time he is definitely my favorite guitar player and it's sad to me that he never gets mentioned you see these like lists of greatest guitar players of all time Jimi Hendrix all these guys and they deserve what they deserve but Chet Atkins definitely deserves to be up there Les Paul as well another pioneer those two together I got a couple uh, at least one uh, album with both Les Paul and Chet Atkins. You couldn't ask for more polar opposites <laughs> in terms of attitude and playing. Well, their playing style was not too off, but at the same time, different styles for sure. And um, yeah, the spicy interaction between the two of them. Some magic is made in there somewhere. But did you guys notice the fidelity of this record? It's amazing. The bass, sure, it was scratchy. It's a flexi disc, yada, yada, yada. But the, f the fidelity was amazing. Definitely high fidelity. The bass was phenomenal, too. It was really, really good. I mean, with a clean stylus and cleaning this up, I think it would sound pretty good. There's a couple crimps in it, which, you know, there's a kind of, you can't come back from those. Even though it says bend it back, I mean, you're not going to 
recover from a crimp and a flexi disc, unfortunately. But let me know down in the comments below what the best sounding flexi disc slash sound sheet that you've ever come across is. This is mine for sure. And it was just a, a giveaway in a guitar player magazine. And we had, I had inherited my wife's grandfather was a very, very good guitar player, you know, very similar to actually Les Paul or even Chet Atkins. Um, amazing, amazing talent. And he had boxes full of guitar player magazines. And um, this was in there. We got a couple of flexi discs out of those, which are really, really cool. So anyway, that's going to do it for now, guys. Hope you thought it was interesting. Give me a like, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already. But that's going to do it for now. Happy record, honey. We will see you tomorrow.